Hey everyone. So in this video, I wanted to show you very quickly something that I shared over the past couple of days on how I'm using GPT 4.5 in my coding environment. So here I have Windsurf, which is one of my favorite coding environments that's powered by AI. And I have all of these models available now. So we have the Cloud 2.7 Sonnet, Tinky model, and the GPT 4.5, which is in beta. What I want to show you here is my sort of workflow which is giving me some really cool results. The first thing I want to show you is the result of it. Here is this nice little game that was created purely by AI. And you can see that it basically tries to provide a way for us to learn in a sort of adventure, learn more about new topics that are found in something like Wikipedia. So it says Wiki Explorer turns learning into an adventure with AI powered navigation challenges, interactive visualization and fun trivia games. Now the whole game is not fully developed. This is literally the first iteration on this game. I'm going to show you how I use Windsurf to come up with this, including the prompts and so on. So stay tuned for that. Let me show you the website here and roughly how the website actually works. So it has the name of the game here. This one apparently doesn't work. That needs to be fixed, but it's there. I think that could be a cool feature. And then it has an about page, but this is the landing page and you can start playing the game right away. No login page, none of that yet. So these are the features. It has an explanation of the features, how it works, how the game works. And all of this, again, the landing page and everything was generated by the model that I choose, which is Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. Now, the plan for the actual game or the project was created by GPT 4.5. I'm finding that GPT 4.5 is a lot better at this. My idea is that probably there are some models that are better at planning and better at coming up with very clever and innovative ways and in how to develop an application. And that's basically what I wanted to test. But in this workflow, I use GPT 4.5 to create the plan and Cloud 3.7 Sonnet to execute on that plan. So let's look at the game. So you click on that, and then you start a new game. Okay, so that's working. So this feature here from my test doesn't work as great. This definitely needs to be improved, but this is just a visual representation of your progress throughout this game. The idea of the game is super simple. Again, I did not come up with this idea. It was totally created by GPT 4.5, including the plan to create the game. And basically the game is quite simple. You have a destination, which will be this, okay? So it's a topic and this topic is found in Wikipedia. So it was randomly chosen. And now it also gives me a randomly chosen topic. And now the idea is that I will need to find the connection from Mars to COVID-19 pandemic. And you can use an LLM to request hints. So this is also powered by an LLM as well. So I can also use that to give me an explanation. For instance, if I don't understand a topic, it gives me an explanation on what is the next step or potentially the next link that I need to click on to reach this particular topic. So as an example, here I am in Mars. What is the relation between Mars and COVID-19 pandemic? That's how you kind of think about this game. Maybe there are other clever strategies. Then you also have some scores, moves, hints, use, and so forth. I'm not even sure if all of that is working. You can request hint to get the hint from the LLM if you need that. So let's say in this case, I needed that hint because I cannot really think of a link that I would like to click on to get me to here. So let's say I'm very new to the topic. That could be the case. So I'm going to request a hint. And again, this makes a call to an LLM. All of that code was generated by Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. So it says, here's a hint. And this hint is very easy. I don't know what this actually means, but anyways, there's easy, medium, and hard. And I need to look into that to see what exactly that is. So it says one possible hint could be search for space exploration during the COVID-19 pandemic to find a connection between Mars and target articles. So it's giving me some suggestion. And I think an improvement here is to ask the model to specifically focus on the topics here. I'm not entirely sure if it's actually focusing on these topics or if this is completely random and something that's not really found here. Otherwise that will not be useful, right? Because I really need to take a next step and I don't really want to get lost. And I actually want to make progress so that I find that connection. As an example, I'm gonna select here, okay, Mars. I don't know what exactly could be a connection with Mars to here or what could lead me to there. Maybe there are some topics that could lead me to COVID-19 pandemic, but let me see if I can find something here. I mean, it could be something like this. That could be one candidate. And actually I'm just gonna click on that. And again, I'm just testing different things here, but this is the fun part of the game. So you read more about what it is, you learn about that, right? And then you click on the link. And again, the game is not perfect. This is the first iteration of the game. I can always improve it. I can always ask different things. Apparently this is like the third phase of the game. I can always choose to improve this, maybe by giving me a preview, for instance, of 
each of these topics if I'm not too familiar with it. That's not my field of expertise, so I wouldn't know, but that would be super helpful for me. So that at least is the idea of the game. Now, let me see what I can pick here. So this is the difficulty of the game, right? I'm not sure what exactly, because I'm not an expertise in any of these topics. I'm not entirely sure what exactly I should click to get me closer to this topic. I'm gonna try something here. Okay, I'm just gonna click on this one. So that's climate change. All right, and you can see it here. I'm already there. I'm not entirely sure how this one is connected to that. That's sort of the interesting thing, right? That's the interesting thing about the game itself. You know, you can get lucky, for instance, when you are clicking on topics. The reason I click on this topic, I, I just assume this is a topic of high debate. So that kind of was my connection. And I would want to think that COVID is also another one of high debate. So that's why I chose it. And it's right here. So now if I click on it, it tells me mission accomplished. 710 total score, three moves, one hint used. So we went from here to here in like three to four steps. Now, this is the first time I did this and I think I got lucky in this one. So it says you're a navigation genius. Now, I for some reason cannot escape this. Now that's not really good in terms of design, but anyways, I can probably, I can probably add, add some features here to be able to close this. But at least the game, the basic functionality actually works. It's using AI, it's using Wikipedia as a knowledge source. Everything seems to be working, at least the first iteration of it. And I think this is fun. This is a really interesting way to build new experiences for how to navigate, for instance, knowledge and so forth. Now I've been playing this the whole weekend and I've had a lot of fun. I've learned about a lot of new topics. The features for sure can be improved. They're not perfect by any means, but I think this is already very interesting and I really did not have to touch any code. Everything was done by the agent and the language model I selected. Let's go back to the code and I'm gonna show you my prompts. So this is the first prompt. I told it, can you help me design a novel and creative games that uses AI to help make Wikipedia fun to learn about, proposes a few ideas. So the idea with this is that, can we use the AI to build fun and interesting new ways to consume content or learn about topics and so forth? That's kind of the idea here. I have some other ideas I wanna explore, but I just wanted to see if I could figure out sort of a workflow that works nicely so that I can potentially integrate this into some more serious projects that I have in mind. Anyway, so it requested this. And by the way, the model I use here is GPT 4.5. That's the one I'm exploring with. I noticed that the responses in terms of brainstorming and so forth are much better with GPT 4.5. I think that's a proper use case for GPT 4.5. And it gave me all of these. I think all of these are very cool ideas, by the way, if you read through them. But this is the one I went with. This is the one that called my attention. And so I selected that one. Then I told it, how do we build Wix Explorer? Can you create a plan? Again, still using GPT 4.5. Created a plan. So this is the planning part. Instead of copy pasting it, because WinServe also has agentic capabilities, I told it, help, please help me write that plan inside of the plan.md file inside of this folder, which is right here this folder here. And so he created that file, then wrote, edited that, and then just created a summary of it here. So that's what we got here. So we have all the faces of the project. So far, it has reached to this point. We still haven't done gamification, any of this as well. This hasn't been done as far as I could tell. I uh, just briefly checked the project. We have a backend, frontend. I think the backend is using Fast API. So for deployment, I believe it chose Vercel. And for backend, again, it chose this one. For the AI stuff, it chose this one. I'm not sure why it gave us different options. Don't know about that, but I just copy pasted everything, right? Didn't really tell it anything explicitly. This one, yeah, it's using Wikipedia and so forth. So that's literally the stack right there. That's the plan. And then after that, I told it, so let's build a game. And now I switch to Cloud Chip with Seven Sonnet. This is about writing the code, the entire code that you see here, the back end and the front end. So that's where I told it, you have the plan here and just go and start to build. And it's gonna start a build. You can see all of that. It's creating files and so forth. It's creating a lot of files, a lot of code. Sometimes it pauses and then all you need to do is just continue and WinSurf is smart enough to know, okay, this is where I ended and it's gonna continue the process. So you continue to build all the different pages and yeah, so it runs some commands. Okay, so it gave a summary and then I just told it help me run it. If you're not familiar with a specific stack or at this point, I didn't know what stack it actually chose to develop this. So I just told it, hey, help me run this. And then it actually tried to run it. And I think it ran into some issues. Then I think it rejected some command here. Yeah, I had to install some stuff. I did that manually here. That's where the backend stuff. And then I tell it, hey, let me, let's try to run it again. And then it tried to run again. The dependencies were already installed. That's something that I did manual. And again, it's gonna try. And finally it got it running. Okay, so I told it that running. 
Okay, so now it's going to run the front end. And once the front end is running, then I could test it. Then it says, can you explain the game and what's the objective? I wasn't too sure what the game was about. So I just asked it for a quick explanation. And then it gave me an explanation or actually used the context. It does have access to the context. Now, if it analyzed files, it would tell me it analyzed file. That is what I like about Windsurf. It shows you what it's doing. At least the agent is telling you exactly what it's doing here. And then it says, I think the article links are offered should be randomized. Then I told it to sort of improve it a bit because I noticed the game was giving me like weird article links. So that's the only improvement that I did, I guess. And then some optimizations because it was running really slow. Then I tell apply the changes. And then I tell it the game got super slow. Um, how to improve the speed, any ideas. Again, using the Cloud 3.7 thinking model, then it edited a few files. And I noticed that it really got fast and it's doing caching. It's applying a lot of different tricks that you would typically apply for building web apps. That's really cool because it was extremely slow. And that first iteration, I couldn't even play it. It ran into some issues with the URLs, but it fixed that really easily. And now it's having less of that issue. There's a lot of work to do on this, obviously. It took me about, I would say, about less than an hour to complete it. But man, this is so, so much fun building like this. I actually tried the same workflow with my son. I was teaching him how to use Windsurf and we built together a nice 3D Tetris game. It was so much fun because like the game is super challenging when it's 3D. The game is super, super, super cool. And we use the same process, right? We had a little plan and it works. It works really nicely. I think GPT 4.5 has that potential to be uh, like an assistant to do brainstorming. I noticed that it really knows your intent. It removes any kind of content, any additional type of content that it doesn't need. And then it just focuses on the task at hand. And that's what I really like about it. And that's why I chose to use it this way. These are just some ideas I wanted to share on how I'm using these models, having a lot of fun with Windsurf and these integrated models like Cloud 3.7 Sonnet Thinking. This is my default model now at this point. And I'm really hoping to explore more with newer models like Grok Tree. I'm still waiting for that integration here and I'm going to be exploring and sharing more on my findings.